making an album with Biggie and Puffy or none of them. We're not sweating it like that. This is our we, family. We over peacefully here. coexist right now because right. we all cool. Everybody's here. Everybody's. They make. They sell records. We sell records. Well, I guess you could call that selling records. What they do. We sell large amounts of records. Up next on celebrities exposing Diddy, we've got Candace Owens. Recently. Candace just dropped a tweet, or may I say a bomb that left everyone at their 100% deciphering what she might have meant. She says Diddy is an FBI agent, and well, she isn't the only one that believes in that. Okay, well there have always been rumors, and quite frankly I always thought that they were conspiracies because they sounded crazy. First and foremost, rumors that he was gay. Also rumors that he was behind the killing of his quote unquote best friend, the notorious B.I.G., and also that he had something to do with the killing of Tupac. Explicit videos of others in Hollywood, yes, they have named other artists, claiming that homosexuality was a normal practice in the music industry. It's also claiming that Diddy would walk around the house naked and force him to watch him shower, and is alleging that he told, he went forward and told Diddy's chief of staff, Christina Karam, about this. And Christina came back to him and said, well, you know, Sean will just be Sean. His bodyguard said, Are together? So in the authorities' mind, they feel like Puff knew what Meech was doing. Then with the introduction to Jacob and different people, and a lot of people going to jail for money laundering and stuff like that, Puff being, um, and this is documented, Puff being a CI for an FBI agent. I said this years ago that Kim and Kirk Burroughs took some paperwork. They was taking some papers up to the, to the uh, uh, FBI, so like when they was here in New York. They was taking paperwork up there and stuff like that. Don't know what it was. But later on found out that he was a CI. You understand? Now, what happens? He don't have that. The guy probably, that was 20, 30 years, 20 some years ago. The guy probably retired. Puff ain't dealing with him. No, he didn't pass Puff on or something like that. So now, Puff been dodging the legal system with the uh, uh, people had it wrong. They think it was with the Black Mafia family. No, it was with Butt Naked. I said this years ago. The person that he said is a senior advisor, Corey Jacobs. Corey had nine 16 of life sentences for drug trafficking. You make him your senior advisor, even though that was your man, he coming home. That's your man, Pats and Pots and Pants. But Wook was the one who took care of them when they was away. You know what I'm saying? Wook was the one who took care of them. So now, you got all these, you know, these characters, you know, around you. What they gonna come from? Even says people are fools for making Kanye one when he said that and not believe in him. And Kanye, well, you know him. He's going all crazy on the internet, posting his sex messages with Buff Diddy. But as far as Meek Mills, no. Puff Daddy, whoever, none of these niggas. All you fake hard niggas, f you. Wait, come, wait, no, no, wait. hold on, hold on. Okay. All you fake hard niggas, f you. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. I don't give a because you can't shoot nobody anyway. And the reason why you got talks because you did a deal, you fed. You know what I'm saying? That's why you got to come at me because part of the deal for you to be a do all that rah, 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 and get out of jail is that you promise that you're going to go pull my coat co car. So y'all niggas shut the up about me. Now let me say it calm. You niggas shut the up about, <laughs> you shut the up about Michael. Poison me. And by the way, y'all done already fuck with me so much. Y'all already black mirrored me. You already made everybody think I'm crazy. You already took my family away. You already separated all my friends. I don't got no celebrity friends. Because when I was on TV, on Instagram saying, I don't know where my child is. And the Kardashians kidnapped my daughter in public and I didn't have the address of my child. None of these niggas that want to say something Travis now. Travis gave you the address though? Travis gave me the address. Right. But as far as Meek Mills, no. Puff Daddy, whoever, none of these niggas. All you fake hard niggas, fuck you. Wait, Come, wait, no, no, wait. hold on, hold on. Okay. All you fake hard niggas, fuck you. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. I don't give a fuck who, cause you can't shoot nobody anyway. And the reason why you got talks cause you did a deal, you fucking fed. You know what I'm saying? That's why you got to come at me, because part of the deal for you to be a do all that rah, 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 and get out of jail is that you promise that you're going to go pull my coat co car. So y'all niggas shut the fuck up about me. You know what I'm saying? The 808, the 808 exists in the lowest chakra of your body. The majority of content that's related to the 808 is killer or sexual content. The original 808s was even off pitch. Right. So that meant it's an actual sound in the track that you don't realize is there that is fucking up it your entire you right. frequency. Right. 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 And now today, every time I hear a car come out, it's 808. But if you think about African music and hip hop and what we break, it to, break dance to, it was light. The percussion. It was upbeat. Right. It was the drums. Mm. Now it's like, and all of this is a bigger, and it's like, 
Man, you know, at this point, it's like they should have killed me when I said George Bush don't care about black people. I ain't got nothing to say. You know, they SNL making my wife say I divorced him on TV because they just wanted to get that bar off. And I ain't never even seen the papers. We never even divorced. Wow. So how we, because well, that, that ain't no joke to me. Well, my my kids shit. want their parents to stay together. Right. I want their parents, I want us to be together. But I if want y'all to be together too. If you look at the media, that's not what they promoting. Right. That's not what they want. They want it to be a new wedding, a new episode, a new TV show. And then they have people all around in my wife's ear. You know what I'm saying? This is a publicist that's next to her. I don't fuck with her. People have been making conspiracies all the time about him being involved in the deaths of both the notorious B.I.G. and Tupac. It has all been accusations and conspiracy theories until not too long ago, when Diddy's ex Cassandra Ventura filed a lawsuit against him, accusing him of repeated sexual assault. Candace Owens was ready to come up with some of her own stories and bold claims. And you're probably thinking to yourself, how bold can it be? Not interesting because Combs's ex, her name was Cassandra, she went by Cassie, and she filed a federal lawsuit against him in New York alleging years of assaults. Now, again, they dated for like more than 10 years, so she obviously was very close to him and knew his lifestyle. Her lawsuit contained graphic allegations that he raped her in 2018, that he physically abused her, that he intimidated her, that he made her have sex with male escorts while he watched. The lawsuit also alleged that he blew up another artist's car, his name was Kid Cudi, in order to stop him from seeing Cassie rom romantically when him and Cassie split up. I mean, again, all of this sounds insane, if it's true. Well, Kid Cudi thought the accusations were true. He said, yes, that is factually what happened. But of course, Diddy denied those allegations. And he instead came out and said that Cassie was simply trying to blackmail him for $30 million. And by the way, that is plausible, right? We've seen tons of those instances, especially in the era of Me Too. But this one felt a little different because we're like, okay, but she's known you for a very long time and these allegations are quite weird, but we never got a follow up there because then he very quickly settled with her for an undisclosed amount. And then even more women started coming out saying they were victims of Diddy and then it seemed like an avalanche and he issued a very strong statement condemning them for essentially extortion attempts and trying to murky his name. So again, you don't know what's real, you don't know what's not until this recent lawsuit, and this one's different, guys. A man named Rodney Jones has come forward to sue Diddy, and this is not your average lawsuit. I will say right now, many lawsuits are in fact frivolous. I have fought and won frivolous lawsuits. This person, however, his name is Rodney Jones. He lived, traveled, and he worked with Diddy as a producer, and he is alleging that he has hours upon hours of recorded footage and pictorial evidence, which has been included in this document, to support his claims. And I have to say, these claims seem very credible. Now, to be clear, Rodney, also goes by Lil Rod, uh, is suing Diddy and others, we're gonna get to who those others are, for $30 million, claiming that he was subjected to sexual misconduct for the duration of the production process of an album. It is a 70 page lawsuit that has been filed in the Southern District of New York. And he is claiming that while working on the album and living with Combs in New York, California, Florida, other locations, that Diddy repeatedly groped him, touching his, I'm sorry to say this guys, his anus and his crotch without consent and attempting to groom him into accepting a homosexual relationship by showing him explicit videos of others in Hollywood. Yes, they have named other artists, claiming that homosexuality was a normal practice in the music industry. He's also claiming that Diddy would walk around the house naked and force him to watch him shower, and is alleging that he told, he went forward and told Diddy's chief of staff, Christina Karam, about this. And Christina came back to him and said, well, you know, Sean will just be Sean. So we're gonna go through some of these explosive claims. Again, right at the top, I'm going to make it clear so that I don't get sued, that these are all allegations. Everything that I'm going to say after this is an allegation. You should have guessed that this much money doesn't come from thin air. And we all are well familiar with the humble beginnings of Diddy, like father like son, they say. Candace later tweets that the feds are raiding Diddy's house not to find evidence to convict him, but to hide them instead 
She reinforces those allegations that Diddy and his son shot someone in the recording studio, and LIPD tried to cover the whole thing up. And I'm sure you guys know how fast word gets out in the media. Apparently, not this time. Candace might be right about this whole gang thing. The police even issued a statement that they can't arrest Diddy because the Cassie case happened a long while ago. The person responsible for Diddy's clean up is Mr. Muhammad. He tells all his people to call him if things don't go right. And who is this Mr. Muhammad, you might ask? The head security for none less but Jackson himself, who happened to also be present in the scene at the time of Jackson's unexpected death. Diddy and his son murdered someone in plain daylight and got away with it. But there's apparently a man that they know, that everyone who works with Diddy knows, that they can call and they essentially will get everything cleaned up and they are implicating the LAPD in this madness because they produced fake reports. And he's got some real good evidence to back up these claims. He says that one evening uh, during a camp that they were running with several musicians, Mr. Combs and Jay Combs were in a heated conversation with somebody named G. And while this conversation was moved out of the studio and into a restroom that was adjacent to where Jones was sitting, he heard approximately two feet away from him again, Mr. Jones is the producer that's suing him, gunshots suddenly ringing out. He recalls hearing multiple gunshots. Mr. Jones immediately went into a state of shock and fear that he would be shot next. He genuinely believed that he would be shot through the door due to how close he was. After the shooting ended, a crowd gathered around the restroom. When the door finally opened, Mr. Combs and his son exited. G was lying on the restroom floor in a fetal position, holding his stomach and bleeding out of his leg and his hip area. Everyone stood around and looked up at him. Frustrated by the lack of aid that was being provided, Mr. Jones, the producer that's suing again, dropped everything, ran to the guy, and immediately began placing pressure. As he was applying pressure on his stomach, he realized that G was gushing blood from another area. He decided to lift G up and place him to sit on the toilet, and he asked the crowd to call the ambulance. Now, here is what is interesting. The ambulance does arrive, uh, and Mr. Combs, according to Mr. Jones, Diddy gave, gives strict instructions to inform the police that he had nothing to do with the shooting. He also forced the producer to lie to the police by telling them that G was shot while standing outside of the studio. And the police, just believed this, despite the overwhelming evidence that this shooting did not take place outside of the studio and that it instead took place inside near the bathroom. He includes in his lawsuit this photo of the bathroom of, and we are blurring it here, of the blood in that bathroom. And then it is stunning because he also shows how the media then reported it, right? A fake police report was produced and then fake headlines were the result. This is CBS News. Man shot outside party at Hollywood recording studio. The key word there is outside. How on earth could the LAPD be implicated in lying? Well, he alleges that there is an individual, again, that they know that they can call to clean up any types of murders. And that individual will make sure the right officers write down the fake police reports and that those are then fed to the media to cover up murder. The second big explosive thing that came from this document are the allegations that Diddy hosts freak-offs, essentially sexual events to procure blackmail on other people in the industry. That they all come and they have these drug-fused parties with underage boys, with underage girls. And throughout this lawsuit, he names multiple current rappers that have been involved in these parties and are therefore existing under blackmail, right? So if you if you can suddenly record somebody and they're hooking up with a person that is underage, if you're doing drugs and Diddy has cameras on it, well then Diddy owns you. This whole sex trafficking and blackmail have got people calling Diddy the Epstein of the music industry. The majority of the people targeted were young artists aspiring to get somewhere in this industry and being at one of the elite's parties. Jay-Z isn't any less of a devil than Diddy though. Old allegations about drug trafficking in the early stages of his career are surfacing. The first woman to uncover the homo thugs. She talking about Diddy. That's what these down low bitches was called when Wendy first started talking about it in the 90s, the homo thug. So you hear about stories of Diddy like shooting people, yeah. blowing up cars. Yeah. Is he this gangster that 
behind the scenes that ever is that him or is that Peter shout Ryan? out to wendy williams what do you think y'all could exposing diddy and jay-z be just the tip of the iceberg is the whole music industry just a criminal network of assaults abuse and trafficking let's hope we reveal that in the next video